I picked up your contract. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm not taking the job. You're gonna need an executive assistant. Your point being? That, my friend, is your tunnel out of here. Libby! I'm going for a job back here. A job? I'm gonna be executive assistant to the new unit. <laughs> can you turn down a full-time position? Because Yvonne hates me and I don't blame her. Oh, Bella, don't be silly. I don't hate you, really, I don't. See? I talk too much and give her a headache. I should work alone, driving a truck, where people can't hear me. Done in Southland, Stewart Island, maybe. I admit, we got off to a rocky start, but that was my fault. I should have remembered your work experience is limited and helped you more. It's OK. We both know I'm hopeless. Oh, I missed you. Same. <laughs> so, how was America? Oh, awesome. I learned so much. I never quite worked out what you were doing exactly. Oh, facilitating medical management for the private sector. Which makes you highly qualified for the EA job here. <laughs> well, it's not a done deal yet, but we'll see. Yeah, I was going to apply for the EA job, but now that you're back. There's no reason you can't still apply. No, but without an MBA. Fortunately, Gerald has arranged some management training. It's all the same. It's not the same as having experience. The fact that the hospital is paying for it says that they want to retain him and see him promoted. Well, that is great. But I have the qualifications and experience here and in States. <laughs> so a management role like executive assistant is enough to bring you back? I read the job description. It might be a little below what you're doing in America. Plus working for US dollars versus Kiwi peanuts. I know which I'd choose. If I had a choice? Well, fortunately, I do. I like peanuts. You want Bella to get the job? Yes. But you said she's hopeless. Well, she's well intentioned. She just needs a firm hand. <sighs> Libby! Oh! Why, why didn't you call us from the airport? Oh, Welcome home. Oh, let me look at you. <laughs> What's the story? You bailed on America. I saw a job opportunity here and I thought I'd go for it. Oh, good. Glad to have you back. JJ, Mr. Zanti. I'll catch up with you later. Uh, I'll, I'll come with you. Uh, welcome back and have a great rest. I will. Thanks. Doctor! <laughs> Bro, it is 6 30 in the morning. Did you just crawl in? No, mate. Uh, up bright and early to face a beautiful day. It's raining. Rain makes the flowers grow, Hunter. Money. Hey, coffee? Yes, please. You're a saint. This man is a saint. I'll go grab you the towel. Thank you. OK, should I even ask what happened last night? <sighs> I know, naughty, eh? But hey, you've never had too much to drink. Right. Catch you later. Have a nice day. <sighs> so, you and Tanya had a lovely time in Hawaii, I hope. Yes, until that loser rang up and ruined everything, Isaac. Yeah, she was a grump after that. Where is she at the moment? Sydney, bureau nursing. Hiding. She needs to get yes. back. Right, so JJ can have all his aunties in a row. <laughs> we thought you'd be gone for good. We thought we'd have to get some invite to a first-class fancy pants wedding before we saw you next. <laughs> well, the main thing is, is I'm back and I'm happy to be back. So, um, what's up with Gerald and Brooke? The house sitting for TK. Oh, well, they look close. Friendly, even. Brooke's way less hackery these days. Who knows why? We're just glad she is. <laughs> you see her out more often, too, enjoying herself like a normal person. Gerald's totally her handbag, but he seems OK with that. Jealous? No. Gerald can be friends with whoever he wants. <laughs> so, this job you came back for, senior management or something? Executive assistant. Assistant? Is that like being someone's PA? You came all the way back from America to be Callum's PA. Again. Not PA, it's executive assistant to the CEO with responsibility for the private surgical ward and all inclusive of the GP services unit. Well, we're glad that you're back and we're thrilled that you're moving up in the world. <laughs> Two hangover cures. 
No way. Trust me, sir, if I used to be in mid-school, I'd know about this stuff. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Salty, fatty goodness. Trust me, chocolate milk to wash it down and we will survive the day. <laughs> That's a healthy-looking breakfast. It's a hangover cure. <sighs> Let me guess, and your new resident cocktail maker was practicing on you. Mm-hmm. Well, technically, you should actually call me a mixologist. Yes, and just how much mixing was going on last night? Well, we invented eight new cocktails. Actually, we invented a lot more than that, but only eight were really... Exponentially awesome, and we are unleashing these puppies on the world tonight. We are doing a double act. <laughs> Running away before giving this job a chance is silly. I gave it a chance. Oh, for one day. And now they've offered you a contract. I'm not going to inflict myself on Yvonne. If one day gives her a headache, she'll have a brain tumour before the weekend. She's sorry she offended you. She blames herself for not supporting you more. It's not her fault. I start talking and I can't stop. I go on and on and on. Even I get bored. I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. How about giving it a proper go? Perhaps try talking a bit less and listening a little bit more. I did. And I still keep making mistakes. Well, of course you did on your first day. And not to put too fine a point on it, but you need to contribute rent and food. I'm sick of mince for tea and jam sandwiches for dessert. I'll go on the dole. No, you won't. You're a bright, attractive girl with a future. You just need to get out there and make it happen. What if I suck at everything? Don't be silly. Now, sign this contract and come to work. How else are you going to find a way to talk to all those nice boys? I suppose I could forgive Yvonne just this once. Good girl. Oh, I'm officially Shortland Street's new face on the front desk.